When was the last time we posted a video on FTJ? Honestly guys, I don't remember. But good news is that we are back and we are going to be posting regularly here. We're starting a new series where we are going to be covering all the tech news that has happened around the world. It's going to be uh, two videos a week. Uh, one is going live on Saturday. This is the one you guys are seeing right now. And there's going to be another one. We haven't fixed on the dates yet. It might change around. We don't know. The hosts might as well. Sometimes I might be hosting. Sometimes it might be someone else. As you know, FTJ is like our experimental channel. We kind of, you know, do things, uh, see what works. So anyway, without further ado, let's straight get into the video. So the first big news we have for you guys today is that the Asus ROG Phone 3 has been confirmed. It's launching on July the 22nd. And what's more, we even have confirmation that it's coming with the new Snapdragon 865 Plus processor. Yes, this is not exactly a new processor. Like we had seen with the 855 and 855 Plus, it was mostly a binned version of that processor that could hit higher clock speeds. Uh, so the 865 Plus, it's similar to that. Along with that, uh, we don't have confirmation about the RAM and storage yet, but going by, you know, ROG2 phone standards, we should see a good amount like 6, 8 or at least 10 gigs of RAM with 128 or more storage. I'm expecting this to be at least UFS 3.1. Other than that, coming to the screen, we have leaks that confirm that it's gonna be an AMOLED screen, 6.59 inches. We might see uh, higher refresh rates. I mean, I'm pretty sure we will see higher refresh rates. The leaks have been pointing towards a 144 hertz refresh rate screen. So let's see what happens in that regard. And other than that, obviously, uh, since this is a gaming focused phone, we are gonna get a huge battery. The leaks again are pointing towards a 5,800 milliamp hour battery. So that should be great. We have seen a leaked Tena image and that seems to point towards three cameras to the back. And some reports have been saying that the primary camera may be a 64 megapixel followed by a 13 megapixel ultra wide. Uh, the third camera on the back, uh, we don't really know what it is yet. It could be a depth sensor, it could be a macro sensor, we don't really know. And on the front, uh, we should be seeing one selfie camera. Guys, these are all based around renders. So we don't really know if it's uh, gonna pan out exactly like this. So take it with a pinch of salt. For the second big news of the week, we have some more juicy details about the OnePlus Nord. Yes, I know you guys are really excited about this mid-ranger from OnePlus. And to be honest, we are too, right? Because this is like OnePlus coming back to the mid-range after a long, long while. We have confirmed details that the OnePlus Nord is launching on July the 21st. That's the day before the ROG Phone 3 is being launched. And you can watch the live event through an augmented reality app. The OnePlus Nord uh, AR app, it's available for download now through the Play Store. We'll leave a link to it in the description down below. And you can download it, see if it works with your phone. The CEO of OnePlus, Pete Lau, he has also uh, tweeted out that they are working to make sure that it works with a, as many number of Android phones as possible. We still have a week or two left to get to the launch. So by that time, uh, those issues might be fixed and you should get the augmented reality experience. And to be fair, this is not the first time that OnePlus has done this. We have uh, also seen that OnePlus doing the same thing with the OnePlus 2. They launched that in VR, that's virtual reality. This is augmented reality, kind of different. But yeah, so OnePlus has experience in this. So we are uh, assuming that this should be a, you know, good launch basically. And staying on that same topic, we also have another leak that points towards uh, OnePlus Nord being launched with OnePlus TWS earphones. Yes, OnePlus after the success of their Bullets Wireless Z, that's their neckband style Bluetooth earphone, they're finally launching uh, their TWS earphone. So, you know, not much details about them till now, but hey, let's see how well they turn out. And for the third big news of the week, and yes, this one is another phone launch. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 launch that's happening on August the 5th. So that's next month. And we don't have much rumors about it at this point, but we have seen a few leaked renders that point towards the back of the phone being very much like the S20 Ultra. 
So what we are expecting here is that we might see a periscope zoom camera and along with that the regular primary ultra wide and there might be a fourth sensor and this fourth sensor could be a 3d time of light sensor or it also actually might be laser autofocus it's very difficult to tell from the rendered images at this point anyway like the s20 series the note 20 might also be coming in two variants but unlike last year where we saw the note 10 Lite and the note 10 plus instead we might be seeing the note 20 and the note 20 ultra now, what are the differences between these two phones? We're not really sure at this moment. But what we have some inkling about is the processor inside. So for the European and American markets, we would probably be seeing the Snapdragon 865 Plus. That's the same one we saw in the ROG Phone 3. Uh, not saw, like should be seeing in the ROG Phone 3. And uh, the other markets, like the Indian markets, we are still relegated to Exynos, sadly. Along with that, uh, we heard rumors that the Note 20 should be getting 5G by default. So all models of the Note 20 should have 5G. And of course, there'll be the S Pen. Continuing on the Samsung rumor train, we have a juicy leak for you guys. Apparently, Samsung has been thinking of ditching Qualcomm altogether. And next year, we might see all S series and Note series flagships sport Exynos processors. This means that there won't be a Qualcomm 875 or whatever they decide to call it named variant for European markets. Instead, all S series and Note series phones would probably end up sporting the Exynos 1000 series of chipsets. Now, as to the reason why Samsung might be doing something like this, the rumors that have been floating around seem to suggest that Qualcomm has increased the price of the 875 quite a lot internally. So the price of the chip might be somewhere around $250. So this might just be a cost cutting measure. But then again, this is a rumor. We don't really have much to go on at this point, but let's see what how it turns out. Okay, so we have spoken a lot about Samsung flagships, but let's not ignore the budget range as well. There are some rumors that Samsung might be launching a new phone, the A01 core, or it might be rebranded as the M01 core here in India. And this is like an extremely budget focused device. So what we are expecting is a 5.19 inch TFT LCD 720p screen, a quad core MediaTek with one gig of RAM, a single rear camera, and guess what, a removable back. Yes, the removable plastic backs might actually come back with the M01. So as far as price goes, it's rumored to be around $120 in the US. The Indian pricing, I don't think Samsung would price it anywhere above 8,000 rupees. So let's see if these rumors turn out to be true. There's one more phone launch that we'd like to talk about. And no, it's not Samsung, it's Realme. The C11 looks to be a continuation of the budget C series. So guys don't expect huge specs here. What we are probably looking at is a 6.5 inch 720p screen. Uh, powering that would be a MediaTek G35 chipset. We are getting somewhere around two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage. The software would obviously be handled by Realme UI. To the back, we would get dual cameras, 12 megapixel primary, two megapixel depth sensor, and there also might be a five megapixel selfie shooter to the front. As far as the battery goes, we are looking at a 5,000 milliamp hour battery with 10 watts of fast charging. Of course, all these uh, specs, they are based on the Realme C11 that has been launched in Malaysia. We are hoping that we should see similar, if not the exact same specs, translate when the Realme C11 launches here in India. Okay, so moving on to some more future phone launches. I mean, we don't even know if this one would actually launch as a phone. We just have a patent that says Xiaomi is working on something like this. So you guys remember the Mi Mix Alpha, right? We made a dedicated video on it. Is it crazy phone from Xiaomi with the display that curves and tally round to the back? Well, it seems like Xiaomi is working on something like that, a little less crazy. This is supposed to be like a dual display phone. It kind of reminds me of the Yota phone. I don't know if you guys remember that. That's like quite a long back, but it had like a regular screen to the front and an e-ink display to the back. Well, this kind of seems to follow the same design trend. Well, that's about it from Xiaomi as far as displays go. But we also have rumors that the Mi Band 5 might be launching globally very soon. 
in fact as soon as july 15th but this is supposed to be a european launch we don't really know when or if the mi band 5 would be coming to india but hey we did make a dedicated video on the mi band 5 back on our main channel c4e tech here's a card to that video in case you guys are interested and speaking about displays, foldable displays and all that, we actually forgot to mention this before, but along with the Galaxy Note 20, we might also see the Galaxy Fold 2. So yeah, the you remember the first generation Fold, right? So the Galaxy Fold 2 might also make an appearance at the same unpacked event. Okay, so it's been a lot of mobile content thus far, so let's wrap it up with some PC news. Intel has released a new Thunderbolt 4 standard. Now, it's an improvement on the existing Thunderbolt 3 standard, as in we get faster device storage speeds, so up to 3000 Mbps. We also get now support for up to two 4K displays. Previously, Thunderbolt 3 could support only one 4K display. Thunderbolt 4 can also, instead of two 4K displays, we can also connect one 8K display. We also had this in Thunderbolt 3, but Thunderbolt 4 has made this official. We now have support for uh, wires up to two meters, supporting 40 Gbps. And finally, Thunderbolt 4 is also going to be carried over USB-C like Thunderbolt 3. Now, guys, don't get this confused. USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4 are not the same. And every USB-C port isn't going to be Thunderbolt 4 or even Thunderbolt 3 capable. If you guys would like me to do a separate video explaining what Thunderbolt is and why it's useful, especially in like modern Ultrabooks, then leave a comment, let us know, and we'll try to make that happen. And for the last news of the day, Ryzen has launched a new XT series of processors in their 3000 series lineup. So we now have the 3600 XT, the 3800 XT and the 3900 XT. Now, this is not replacing the previous 3600X, 3800X and 3900X. Instead, they're slotting in at the same price. So what's the difference between the XT and the X? This is not an architectural change guys, this is not Zen 2 Plus or anything like that. So don't expect a huge boost in performance. In fact, the only changes here are slight boosts in core clock speeds, like per core clock speeds as well as boost clock speeds. Uh, but what happens is because most of our games are so much uh, still single thread or at least uh, four threads, they don't use all the eight threads that are present in like the new Ryzen chips, the boost in single clock speeds gives us a pretty big FPS improvement, like around 5-10 FPS depending on what game you're playing, what resolution and all that jazz. Anyway, the good thing about this is that AMD is pricing the XT chips the same as the X chips, but the X chips is still not, you know, being phased out. You can still buy them, but I don't know why you really would. Other than, hey, if you get a really good combo deal, uh, that's what AMD seems to be hinting at, that the older X chips, uh, like the 3600X, you might be getting a great combo deal with a motherboard. So if that happens, then hey, those third gen Ryzen chips, they're still great processors and they're worth buying. Anyway, with that, we come to the end of this video. I know it was kind of weird, kind of awkward. We're still finding out how to do this. This has been my first time doing a news video, guys. So if this wasn't up to the mark, uh, I apologize for that. If you guys want any changes, maybe tinker around with the format a bit more, maybe make it a bit more structured, have a script for it. Any suggestions, anything, let me know via the comments. And as always, this has been Omurte, your host. You have been watching FTJ. Thanks a lot for sticking around till the end, guys. Have a good one. Cheers.